All right, y'all. Today we're going to look at everyone's favorite topic, psychopaths. So buckle in, sit tight. This is going to be a wild ride. All right. Now, we're not going to go over the Hollywood version of a psychopath. We're going to go over the real diagnosis that psychologists and psychiatrists use to actually determine if someone is truly a psychopath. And we're going to start with Hervey Cleckley. Hervey Cleckley was one of the pioneers in the field of the study of what actually makes up a psychopath and what are the characteristics of a psychopath. And he started this in the uh, early 1900s and really developed it out in the mid uh, 1900s, 1941, and then uh, further continued into the 1970s. And what he did is he came up with 16 characteristics that correlate with being a psychopath. And here are the diagnostic characteristics according to Cleckley. All right, I'm gonna go through these briefly. And this is going to give you a picture of what a psychopath looks like. If you are interested in mental health, you are interested in forensic psychiatry or psychology, uh, or you are interested in criminology, or just uh, kind of developing this awareness, then this should be interesting. First off, we have presence of an external charm and of a remarkable intelligence, okay? Absence of hallucinations or other signs of irrational thinking. This is important because many people think that psychopaths are these people with schizophrenia that are having these crazy hallucinations, but according to Cleckley, it says absence of hallucinations in this or signs of irrational thinking. So this is interesting. Absence of nervousness, of psychoneurotic manifestations, instability, or little formality, falsehood and insincerity, lack of feelings of remorse or shame. Okay, very important there. Uh, inadequate, inadequately motivated antisocial behavior, uh, insufficient reasoning and lack of ability to learn from lived experience, pathological egocentrism and inability to love, general poverty in the main affective relationships, specific loss of intuition and sensitivity in interpersonal relationships uh, in general. Uh, fantastic behavior and not recommended with and without uh, drink. Another interpretation of this is fantastic and uninvited behavior with drink and sometimes without. So uninvited behavior, okay, putting their hands on people, uh, intimidation, uninvited behavior, that kind of thing. Suicide threats rarely carried out. So they have this sense of importance, so they don't want to necessarily commit suicide. Uh, impersonal, trivial, and poorly integrated sex life. Uh, failure to follow a life plan. Okay, so these were the original criteria that were developed by Creek, uh, Cleckley, and these were the basis of determining uh, more diagnostic criteria of actually measuring psychopaths later in the 20th century. And that's what we're gonna look at next. These come to us from Hare. Okay, Hare was a forensic psychologist and he actually developed a score sheet with 20 traits. And uh, here is actually a representation of what this looks like. So these are scored uh, as zero to two and there are 20 of them. And if the person scores over 30, they are, are deemed a psychopath. Now, with this said, I want to tell you a little a bit of inside knowledge, having worked in the mental health field. People involved uh, as clinicians don't go around calling people psychopaths. 
They don't go around calling people narcissistic. And in fact, these personalities, the places I worked at, were rarely, rarely diagnosed as these personality disorders because of two reasons. Number one, it adds a stigmatization to that person where if you are calling that person a narcissist, thoughts immediately come up to you about what that means. And so that does not facilitate the recovery for that patient. It also sets up this expectation of that person's behavior and kind of solidifies these characteristics around that person when you think of them. So um, both of these reasons are not good. So these are not just thrown around. You may find it in the notes. You may find it um, somewhere in that person's chart that they scored a certain percentage, but people in general, um, based off my experience, are not going around calling people psychopaths or narcissists or anything like that. Another thing about this is this must be done by a licensed medical doctor or a licensed psychologist. These are not things that we could just pick out ourselves and determine because it does require quite a bit of training to understand this stuff. All right, so let's go through these. These are very interesting. Glib and superficial charm number one. Glib and superficial charm. What does glib mean? Do you know what glib means? Glib is showing little forethought or preparation offhand, marked by ease and informality, uh, nonchalant, okay? Lack of depth and substance, superficial, marked by ease and fluency of speaking or writing often to the point of being insincere or deceitful. Uh, smooth, slippery. Okay, so you think of these people who are very good with words and they're almost too good with words and they tend to talk people into things and but there's something usually a little bit off about, about that person if you're really perceptive and uh, that's how uh, they're discovered a lot of time but people who are innocent people may not pick up on this and that's how they can become their victims. Okay, let's continue. Grandiose, exaggerated, high estimation of self, also in narcissistic personality disorder. Need for stimulation. Okay, you see drugs, alcohol, sex, uh, along with these people. Pathological lying. All oh, that drives me crazy. People who lie. Um, also, cunning and manipulativeness. Lack of remorse or guilt. Shallow affect. Superficial emotional responsiveness. Uh, callousness and lack of empathy. Uh, I mean, this is this is probably one of the worst ones. Callousness and lack of em empathy. Parasitic lifestyle. So they're always leeching off each other or other people and a victim. And then they make these promises, but they never follow through with the promises. Poor behavioral controls. Sexual promiscuity. Early behavioral problems. So this was not listed in the original one. And I think my uh, guess is, is that they, through loads of research, they discovered that the adolescence, it started in adolescence and then it never really resolves itself, unfortunately. Um, it's not to say it can't resolve itself, especially when people get into their older age. It usually does um, calm down some. And some people, some very few people come back to the Lord and actually heal themselves. So there is that chance. We want to open that door for people who are ready to come back to God. Um, uh, but early childhood behaviors, lack of realistic long-term goals, that was then the original. Also impulsivity, okay, irresponsibility, failure to accept responsibility for own actions. Another one that drives me crazy with people, you catch them in the act of doing something or you've got them, you have evidence and they still won't admit it. Um, they try to blame it on somebody else. And many people do this, especially in today's society, they, they just don't accept responsibility for their own actions. Um, many short-term marital relationships. So again, they lack that depth. Um, juvenile delinquency, revocation of conditional release, and criminal versatility. So not only one crime, but multiple types of crimes usually. Okay, so this gives us an idea of what this looks like. Let's revisit this uh, checklist again. So a trained clinician will go through and mark these people as having these characteristics. And if they reach a threshold of 30, they are considered uh, a psychopath. All right. So this is the hair um, who was hair is, you know, another famous uh, psychologist. And he is still alive today. You can look him up on YouTube. He has videos. 
And I uh, also want to recommend this book, The Psychopath Whisperer. I have read uh, a few psychopath books. This one was my favorite. This seemed to be the most well-researched, and it was, in my opinion, very legit. And what he did is he actually scanned the brains of psychopath, psychopaths using a mobile MRI machine, and the results are interesting. It is quite interesting how uh, he was able to kind of differentiate what is a normal brain and what is a psychopath's brain and what do they look like. So I'll put the link to these links, uh, these pages below. And uh, if you'd like to look more into this, uh, feel free to do so. Um, again, this is not Hollywood and this is not uh, fake. This is real stuff. This has been developed over loads and loads of research over time. And um, it's good to you know be aware of these things, I think, to be able to identify these types of situations. Now, just because somebody may have a few of these characteristics obviously does not qualify them as a psychopath. And again, just to emphasize, I really do not suggest, based off my training, based off my experience with people with these types of disorders, to go around just throwing these terms out there and calling people these names. It can create a lot of pain. It can create, um, and it, all the whole idea with law of attraction too, you don't wanna magnify these people to you either. Um, just be aware of these things, but let's not tend to focus on them, at least is my suggestion, all right? So again, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you like this type of material, I also have a video specifically on personality disorders on YouTube, and I'll try to find the link to that and put that below as well if you wanna check that one out, where I offer a few pointers on dealing with these types of individuals, okay? So I uh, appreciate your attention. I'll see you next time.